Thank you. Um, I'm going to try this in Spanish. Bienvenido a DevCon 3 de Ethereum Foundation, uh, Cancun, Mexico. I'm. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're a little bit late in starting, so I'm probably going to go right into the uh, Ethereum team introduction. The team is the team leads are here, and I'm just going to say their names first, and then have them come up. Um, and stand beside me. And um, after that, they will each come up and do uh, a quick introduction of themselves and the projects that they, that they lead and the efforts that they lead. So um, Vitalik Buterin, come on up. Chief Scientist, overseeing research. Martin Spenda, security lead. Peter Salaj, Go Team Lead. Jolt Thelfolde, Go Team Light Client Lead. Dr. Christian Wright Wiesner, C Solidity Lead. Yoichi Hirai, Formal Verification, Testing, Research. Alex Beriksasi, Iwasm, Ethereum JS, and Solidity. Jan Leroux, Remix. Piper Miriam, Pi EVM. Victor Trone, although I think it's da Daniel Nedge who will be standing in for him. Daniel? Swarm Team. Vlad Gulhowski, is Vlad here? Come on up, Whisper, Whisper team lead. Everton Fraga representing the Mist team. And Fabian Vogelsteller of Web3.js and Mist. Okay, Vitalik, Vitalik? Okay, um, hello everyone. Yeah, so I am, I mean, as you all know, the founder of the Ethereum Project and the chief scientist of uh, the Ethereum Foundation. And I t uh, basically spend most of my time focusing on uh, research problems. So this basically has to do with uh, figuring out what the Ethereum protocol might look like in the future, um, coming up with thinking about working on refining various advancements, including proof of stake, sharding, scalability solutions, privacy solutions, basically things that will take Ethereum from the state where it is now into something that actually could be used by uh, decentralized applications that would be used by millions of people. So. And I, the Ethereum research team has expanded very significantly in the last uh, few months um, from only maybe a few people to something like 15 people altogether and it will only continue to grow. Um, so, and we'll talk about much more of what we're doing uh, later over the, over the course of today and uh, some of the following days. But some of the highlights include um, Casper, which uh, we have uh, in Vlad Zamfir, Carl Forsch, and um, uh, Chiang Wu, who is going to be prese uh, presenting in about an hour and a bit, right, um, right after I make an introduction to Ethereum. Uh, we have um, sharding, which is a scalability solution that uh, we have a couple of developers starting to work on as well. Um, and uh, we're also uh, focusing on just various smaller protocol improvements, including things like parallelizability, cacheability, something you'll hear, hear about called stateless clients, and just various other sm uh, smaller but very significant um, hope, uh, improvements to the Ethereum protocol. Um, so I, mean, I also, I just personally hope that ev uh, everyone enjoys uh, everything that uh, we're going to present uh, over the next couple of days. And you know, just listen, uh, see, uh, see what's here, and just 
you know, hope that there's something that you find interesting. So thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Svende, and I work as the uh, Foundation Security Lead, uh, which means that I'm part of basically all the projects and trying to ensure that the uh, security aspects, someone looks at those and takes care of those during the life cycles of the projects. And also, uh, not only within the organization, but I also work with uh, actors in the ecosystem in general for all the issues concerning the Ethereum network and the protocol and um, security in its various forms for all these participants. And in my talk tomorrow, I'm going to talk a bit about the retrospective of what's happened during the last year and uh, how we have improved uh, and in what ways and what work we've done in some snippets of the security field. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Peter. You probably don't want to pronounce my family name. And uh, currently, I'm the team lead at Go Ethereum. And uh, just I would like to give you a quick recap of what happened behind the scenes over the last year since Shanghai. So uh, Go Ethereum had quite a, a large progression. We, uh, since Shanghai, we actually released mobile libraries for Android and iOS for Ethereum. We have been working, and you will actually be able to uh, hear more about these on the status uh, talk tomorrow and the Wallet talk tomorrow. Then we have actually d developed a new peer-to-peer uh, -peer discovery protocol to aid in private networks and test networks. Felix will give a talk about this again tomorrow from 9 o'clock, 9.15, sorry, 50. Uh, we have been working and released a light client version 1 and version 2. Jolt will probably detail this in a moment. Uh, we have, um, and we did a lot of uh, things to help developers. For example, we supported configuration files. You probably remember last uh, or at the, at the beginning of this year where the Robson test network fell apart. And thus, we actually introduced a proof of authority protocol into Go Ethereum to have a custom test network that's not attackable um, with a pluggable consensus model that uh, actually has functioned really well for the last year or so. And we are already at block 1 million and something. Uh, we're really proud of that one. Uh, Swarm had a huge, uh, for, never mind, I'll leave it to the Swarm people. <laughs> it's simpler. Uh, we introduced uh, support for hardware wallets, for example, the Ledger and Trezor, which we're kind of proud of. And uh, just to give you a sense of what we're currently working on, we kind of feel that uh, uh, one of the biggest issues, at least for Go Ethereum, is performance bottlenecks currently. So we've put quite a lot of work on, into on this front. For example, we've reduced the database size by about 50%. We reduced the synchronization bandwidth by 60%. Uh, we kind of uh, introduced long, uh, or improved long filtering by two orders of magnitude from minutes to seconds. And uh, currently, we're actually working on in, uh, revamping the entire sync mechanism. So hopefully, we could get a node up and running in maybe two minutes. But maybe that's a bit uh, too optimistic. But that's our goal. And uh, so that's a really, really quick recap of the last year. And if any of you have any suggestions or anything you would like to see Go Ethereum support in the following years, then feel free to find me and tell me what your pain point is. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Joel Falfeldi. I'm uh, also working with the Foundation's Go Ethereum team. I'm mostly responsible for uh, the Light Ethereum subprotocol and the Go Light client. This year has mostly been about under the hood developments. As Peter already mentioned, we have just recently merged the second version of the LES protocol and its implementation in our code base. Uh, we are soon going to have a lot of nice new features and performance improvements. We are going to have a fast log searching and, and uh, and the ultralight clients and the transaction status retrieval. So feature-wise, we are already quite good. Right now, the biggest challenge is to expand the team with more people to work on the light client and work out all the important details and finally bring this project out of the experimental research stage and make it a real product. And thank you. Uh, 
Uh, hello, my name is Christian Reitwiesner. I, um, yeah, I, I participate in several projects, and among them are the Ethereum C++ client, the Solidity project, uh, project and uh, yeah, also some CK snarks. And um, over the last year, we uh, yeah, succeeded to get CPP Ethereum back in shape, and uh, Andre and Pavel mostly worked on that to get to get it sync again to the against the mainnet. So um, C++ Ethereum, Ethereum was always useful to have a third uh, validating client to, to check the tests and consensus rules. And uh, we now implemented snapshot sync, so you can sync it really fast. And we're uh, yeah, removing some of the last race condition bugs. So I think C++ Ethereum should be usable again soon. And uh, Greg Colvin is also working on an improvement of the Ethereum virtual machine as part of the C++ project, which is called EVM 1.5, and he will give a talk at some point, but I don't remember which talk, uh, which date will be on. And um, yeah, in in the Solidity project, uh, we also did some improvements. Uh, I guess the, there will be talks to to explain that. that in detail, and especially we're adding a new form of verification uh, framework where I will talk about on day three, I think. And uh, then another subject I'm working on is, is CK Snarks, which adds uh, privacy, but also um, improved verification of computations. And there will be a, a separate uh, breakout session about uh, CK Snarks. And also uh, a talk by Jakob Eberhardt, uh, I think on day two, uh, where he will present a yeah, framework to make CK Snarks more easily accessible uh, and usable. Thanks. My name is Yoichi Hirai. I write proofs, like mathematical proofs. Sometimes I prove my own wallet correct, and I put my own ether on it, and ask people to attack it and steal my ether, because uh, <laughs> mathematicians proving something um, doesn't necessarily guarantee anything about the reality. Um, to know the reality of Ethereum, I follow the metropolis changes carefully. I translate those heaps improvement proposals into the specification document yellow paper. I work on generating test cases with Dimitri, Martin Swinde, Jared, Guido, Casey. Um, I also work on the C++ framework for generating these test cases. Um, I, on the sideline, I also work on proving Casper correct. I talk about that this afternoon. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Alex Berksassi, or Exec on GitHub. And I'm involved with three projects, the Solidity, Ethereum JS, and Ewasm. So I'm going to tell you a bit of each of them. And um, so Solidity, just uh, some of the facts from the last year. Um, we had probably 300 uh, entries on the change log, 15 releases, and not that many bugs, or at least not many bugs discovered. Um, I guess the major changes we had from Shanghai includes, most of you have seen all of these, but includes like function types, contract metadata, which helps verifying contracts. And we have also added a new compiler interface, which would help in a uh, retrieving everything from the compiler in a much better way than it was before. Now for the next year, we really work on a new intermediate language, uh, which I will gonna have a talk about after, uh, after lunch today. And as Christian has mentioned, we have a new form of verification framework uh, called an SMT checker. Um, that's almost ready as well, but this is the other big part for next year. Um, I would like to thank all the external contributors, all the volunteers we had for Solidity, because their numbers is, is really growing, and we have a lot of uh, good people helping out. Now with Ethereum JS, 
We also received a lot of volunteer contributors this year, and with the help of them, we were able to update uh, all the Ethereum JS projects to be up to speed and support by Zentium. This is actually very important. Not many people knew about this, but it is very important because Ethereum JS is used in many uh, widely used projects, which include Remix, Truffle, Metamask, and many others. Now, regarding eWASM, which stands for Ethereum WebAssembly, there hasn't been that much development in the last year, <clears throat> but that's due to a few reasons. The specification is, is practically ready. It doesn't include Byzantium, but updating it to Byzantium shouldn't take a long time. Um, secondly, the intermediate language in Solidity, which I've mentioned, will enable us to create, to compile Solidity contracts to WebAssembly. Um, and also we received a lot of new contributors there, which seems like it will kickstart the project into creating a new client uh, very soon. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Yann Levrault, Remix developer. Uh, so there is a lot to say on Remix. Uh, so Remix is a web ID, I forgot to say. This is a way to develop smart contracts and then to run smart contracts in a test environment. Uh, Remix has been uh, a started development like one year and a half ago. And we are now in the way of improving the UI. We already improved the code, the backend code. And uh, we have a lot to say. So I will be presenting uh, on Friday uh, one talk about Remix. One important thing that we had uh, since last year is this new UI that has been merged like uh, a few weeks ago. But we also had uh, new users since uh, a few months. Uh, we have a Remix Guitar channel that allows people to give feedback about the UI, give feedback about uh, Remix, the application. And we also have, and this is quite important, uh, for uh, free, sorry, new contributors. So we have uh, Rob, which is over here, I think. And we have Nina and Alex with us working on Remix. And they help the community to improve Remix and to, to go further uh, under contract development. So for the next, I will be giving a talk then uh, on Friday. But basically, we are in a point where we can be proud of what Remix do now, but we still need to work on it, and we still need to improve uh, uh, some, uh, some stuff in Remix. For example, we need to uh, split down the code of Remix so it can be used by the community. Uh, we need also uh, to find a good way for the community to be able to have uh, continuous integration on Remix. And so this is a bunch of work that will be done in the, in the next year. And I will be presenting on Friday some, some other features that we have made uh, last year. And I will be also presenting some new features that have been uh, merged a few weeks ago. And yeah, I hope to see you around for this week so we can just uh, show you how it works. And we can just show you how it's now uh, become easier and easier to develop smart contracts. Thanks. Hello, uh, I'm Piper Merriam, and I'm the Python team lead for the foundation. Uh, let's see, earlier this year, uh, myself and a number of other framework developers came together and established a spec for packaging smart contracts. I'll be talking about that a little later today, shortly after lunch. Um, I am responsible for a lot of the Python tooling in the ecosystem, and this year we've been working on maturing that tooling, uh, bringing it closer to being up to par with the JavaScript ecosystem. And um, I've been working on an alternate implementation of the EVM in Python called PyEVM, and I will also be talking about that later today, later in the afternoon. Um, over this next year, the hope is to bring that implementation online as a new light client node, um, as well as getting broader support and adoption of package management across the ecosystem. Thanks.
Welcome. Uh, I'm not Victor. I'm standing in for him. I'm Daniel, and I'm the architect of Swarm. Uh, our project has uh, grown a little bit beyond the original scope of providing mass storage, decentralized mass storage for Ethereum. And it also now includes applications like high bandwidth communication between the nodes. Uh, our team has grown considerably to uh, grow up to, to, the, to the new challenge. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to give you a more detailed report on uh, what we are doing and what have we already achieved. But briefly, I would like to mention a few cornerstones. So first of all, we have developed a simulation framework where we can test how our network and how the algorithms that we're building are going to cope with uh, various situations at scale, like network partition, uh, bandwidth uh, bottlenecks, or uh, high churn, so nodes leaving and joining the network rapidly. Uh, the first uh, practical application of Swarm is being in development. It's going to be a uh, cloud storage where people can synchronize data between their devices and also share large files and directories between each other. Uh, there are third-party applications of Swarm emerging, uh, such as LivePeer, which is going to be live video and audio streaming using Swarm as a transport layer. And uh, perhaps it is also worth mentioning that uh, we are working on issues such as privacy and censorship resistance so that uh, uh, we can actually uh, support uh, sensitive data and uh, censorship resistant communication. So please uh, come to our talk tomorrow. Uh, and also our breakout session is on Saturday. Thank you. Hello, I am Vlad Glukhovsky. And I'm working on Whisper, which is a communication protocol for uh, distributed applic uh, applications. And at its most secure mode of operation, Whisper is supposed to deliver darkness, um, which means that uh, communication is not only encrypted, but also not, no meta information is being leaked. And this is very important for the cause of liberty. And on, on the last day, I am going to talk about liberty, about whisper, and how to achieve darkness with it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Everton. Uh, I'm from Brazil. Uh, I'm from the MACE team. Uh, MACE was first written by Fabian Vogelsteller, here on my right. Uh, and Alex van der Sende, who couldn't be here for personal and really good reasons. Uh, I work uh, this year on bonding together some other projects into the browser and dealing with some security concerns, which is a primary one for us. And we also have Victor Maya, which is uh, a really skilled developer who's presenting uh, a new experimental project uh, this, this week. Uh, and we have also Mark Garou, a really uh, nice guy, uh, working with uh, Redux uh, and his refactoring mist to, to be more a more scalable one for the future. Uh, well, I invite you all to, to our presentation on the main hall uh, on Friday at uh, 9.40. Uh, well, see you there. Yeah. Hello, um, I'm Fabian Vogelsteller. I um, built the initial Mist and um, working on Web3.js. Uh, I also built the Ethereum wallet and a few other things. Um, probably now m known because of the um, ERC20 token standard I, together with Vit Vitalik, initiated. Um, working currently on Web3.js, I will have a presentation on the third at 1 p.m. about the 1.0 refactor, which is a major refactor, and it actually includes a lot of new features. And uh, it's, right now, it's, I think, the tool uh, which I always wanted to have, <laughs> working on dApps. 
And um, I will also present later today uh, a e new ERC I initiated uh, called ERC 725. It's about identity. And uh, you're welcome to join the breakout hall at 3.30 today, which is downstairs. Um, and maybe a short notice, the, the Wi-Fi password, if you want to know Wi-Fi, it's uh, attendee is the Wi-Fi name, and it's the uppercase, three attendee lowercase. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you all, and thank you guys for doing this on time. We're, actually, we have a few minutes, but I'm going to um, invite you to step down, and we'll invite our um, special guest speakers for, to start off the um, event up. Jerry Brito and Peter Van Valkenburg of Coin Center are here to uh, do the regulatory update and look ahead. This is the talk by Coin Center. We invited them last year to also do the regulatory talk. The Ethereum Foundation takes regulatory and compliance matters very seriously. So we do this at the beginning of the um, DevKind event. And then after that, we have a full agenda for all four days of topics on um, Ethereum platform development, base layer development, research to, is uh, greatly happening today in both this hall and the presentation breakout hall downstairs on the second floor. And uh, just generally, we didn't really I don't we'll give you a quick overview of the four days. So today, many of the, the, subject, the subject matter of the talks are, um, there's a lot of research, there are a lot of research talks going on today. Tomorrow we have uh, core development and a number of technical talks uh, related to core development, platform development, and base layer development. Then day three we have, we're moving into dApps and tools, and, um, and then on day four, we have a number of topics that are miscellaneous of uh, different interests. And diff day four, just to let you know, we um, are moving the main stage downstairs to the Cozumel. So we have this room today, tomorrow, the next day, and day four, we will be self-contained on the second floor. So. <laughs>